Eugene Paul E. P. Weiner was a Hungarian-American theoretical physicist and mathematician. He received half of the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1963 for his contributions to the theory of the atomic nucleus and the elementary particles, particularly through the discovery and application of fundamental symmetry principles. A graduate of the Technische Hochschule in Berlin, Weiner worked as an assistant to Carl Weissenberg and Richard Becker at the Kaiser Wilhelm Institute in Berlin, and David Hilbert at the University of Göttingen. Weiner and Hermann Weyl were responsible for introducing group theory into physics, particularly the theory of symmetry in physics. Along the way he performed groundbreaking work in pure mathematics, in which he authored a number of mathematical theorems. In particular, Weiner's theorem is a cornerstone in the mathematical formulation of quantum mechanics. He is also known for his research into the structure of the atomic nucleus. In 1930, Princeton University recruited Weiner, along with John von Neumann, and he moved to the United States. Weiner participated in a meeting with Leo Szilard and Albert Einstein that resulted in the einstein szilard letter, which prompted President Franklin D. Roosevelt to initiate the Manhattan Project to develop atomic bombs. Weiner was afraid that the German nuclear weapon project would develop an atomic bomb first. During the Manhattan Project, he led a team whose task was to design nuclear reactors to convert uranium into weapons-grade plutonium. At the time, reactors existed only on paper, and no reactor had yet gone critical. Weiner was disappointed that DuPont was given responsibility for the detailed design of the reactors, not just their construction. He became director of research and development at the Clinton Laboratory in early 1946 but became frustrated with bureaucratic interference by the Atomic Energy Commission, and returned to Princeton. In the post-war period he served on a number of government bodies, including the National Bureau of Standards from 1947 to 1951, the Mathematics Panel of the National Research Council from 1951 to 1954, the Physics Panel of the National Science Foundation, and the influential General Advisory Committee of the Atomic Energy Commission from 1952 to 1957 and again from 1959 to 1964. In later life, he became more philosophical, and published The Unreasonable Effectiveness of Mathematics in the Natural Sciences, his best-known work outside of technical mathematics and physics. Early life. Weiner Genepal was born in Budapest, Austria-Hungary on November 17, 1902, to middle-class Jewish parents, Elizabeth and Anthony Weiner, a leather tanner. He had an older sister, Bertha, known as Beery, and a younger sister, Margaret, known as Mansi, who later married British theoretical physicist Paul Dirac. He was homeschooled by a professional teacher until the age of nine, when he started school at the third grade. During this period, Weiner developed an interest in mathematical problems. At the age of 11, Weiner contracted what his doctors believed to be tuberculosis. His parents sent him to live for six weeks in a sanatorium in the Austrian mountains, before the doctors concluded that the diagnosis was mistaken. Weiner's family was Jewish, but not religiously observant, and his bar mitzvah was a secular one. From 1915 through 1919, he studied at the secondary grammar school called Fasori Evangelicus Gymnasium, the school his father had attended. Religious education was compulsory, and he attended classes in Judaism taught by a rabbi. A fellow student was Janos von Neumann, who was a year behind Weiner. They both benefited from the instruction of the noted mathematics teacher Laszlo Ratz. In 1919, to escape the Beirut L.A. Kuhn communist regime, the Weiner family briefly fled to Austria, returning to Hungary after Kuhn's downfall. Partly as a reaction to the prominence of Jews in the Kuhn regime, the family converted to Lutheranism. Weiner explained later in his life that his family decision to convert to Lutheranism was not at heart a religious decision but an anti-communist. 1. On religious views, Weiner was an atheist. 
After graduating from the secondary school in 1920, Weiner enrolled at the Budapest University of Technical Sciences, known as the Muagetem. He was not happy with the courses on offer, and in 1921 enrolled at the Technische Hochschule in Berlin, where he studied chemical engineering. He also attended the Wednesday afternoon colloquia of the German Physical Society. These colloquia featured such luminaries as Max Planck, Max von Lauer, Rudolf Lardenberg, Werner Heisenberg, Walter Nernst, Wolfgang Pauli, and Albert Einstein. Weiner also met the physicist Leo Szilard, who at once became Weiner's closest friend. A third experience in Berlin was formative. Weiner worked at the Kaiser Wilhelm Institute for Physical Chemistry and Electrochemistry, and there he met Michael Polanyi, who became, after Laszlo Ratz, Weiner's greatest teacher. Polanyi supervised Weiner's DSC thesis building on Zerfall von Molekulen. Middle years Weiner returned to Budapest, where he went to work at his father's tannery, but in 1926, he accepted an offer from Karl Weissenberg at the Kaiser Wilhelm Institute in Berlin. Weissenberg wanted someone to assist him with his work on X-ray crystallography, and Polanyi had recommended Weiner. After six months as Weissenberg's assistant, Weiner went to work for Richard Becker for two semesters. Weiner explored quantum mechanics, studying the work of Erwin Schrödinger. He also delved into the group theory of Ferdinand Frobenius and Eduard Ritter von Weber. Weiner received a request from Arnold Sommerfeld to work at the University of Göttingen as an assistant to the great mathematician David Hilbert. This proved a disappointment, as the aged Hilbert's abilities were failing, and his interests had shifted to logic. Weiner nonetheless studied independently. He laid the foundation for the theory of symmetries in quantum mechanics and in 1927 introduced what is now known as the Weiner D-matrix. Weiner and Hermann Weyl were responsible for introducing group theory into quantum mechanics. The latter had written a standard text, Group Theory and Quantum Mechanics, but it was not easy to understand, especially for younger physicists. Weiner's group theory and its application to the quantum mechanics of atomic spectra made group theory accessible to a wider audience. In these works, Weiner laid the foundation for the theory of symmetries in quantum mechanics. Weiner's theorem proved by Weiner in 1931 is the cornerstone of the mathematical formulation of quantum mechanics. The theorem specifies how physical symmetries such as rotations, translations, and CPT symmetry are represented on the Hilbert space of states. According to the theorem, any symmetry transformation is represented by a linear and unitary or antilinear and anti-unitary transformation of Hilbert space. The representation of a symmetry group on a Hilbert space is either an ordinary representation or a projective representation. In the late 1930s, Weiner extended his research into atomic nuclei. By 1929, his papers were drawing notice in the world of physics. In 1930, Princeton University recruited Weiner for a one-year lectureship at seven times the salary that he had been drawing in Europe. Princeton recruited von Neumann at the same time. Jenna Powell Weiner and Janos von Neumann had collaborated on three papers together in 1928 and two in 1929. They anglicized their first names to Eugene and John, respectively. When their year was up, Princeton offered a five-year contract as visiting professors for half the year. The Technische Hochschule responded with a teaching assignment for the other half of the year. This was very timely, since the Nazis soon rose to power in Germany. At Princeton in 1934, Weiner introduced his sister Mansi to the physicist Paul Dirac, whom she married. Princeton did not rehire Weiner when his contract ran out in 1936. Through Gregory Bright, Weiner found new employment at the University of Wisconsin. There he met his first wife, Amelia Frank, who was a physics student there. However, she died unexpectedly in 1937, leaving Weiner distraught. 
He therefore accepted a 1938 offer from Princeton to return there. Weiner became a naturalized citizen of the United States on January 8, 1937, and he brought his parents to the United States. Manhattan Project Although he was a professed political amateur, on August 2, 1939, he participated in a meeting with Leo Szilard and Albert Einstein that resulted in the einstein szilard letter, which prompted President Franklin D. Roosevelt to initiate the Manhattan Project to develop atomic bombs. Weiner was afraid that the German nuclear weapon project would develop an atomic bomb first, and even refused to have his fingerprints taken because they could be used to track him down if Germany won. Thoughts of being murdered, he later recalled, Focus your mind wonderfully. On June 4, 1941, Weiner married his second wife, Mary Annette Wheeler, a professor of physics at Vassar College, who had completed her Ph.D. at Yale University in 1932. After the war she taught physics on the faculty of Rutgers University's Douglas College in New Jersey until her retirement in 1964. They remained married until her death in November 1977. They had two children, David Weiner and Martha Weiner Upton. During the Manhattan Project, Weiner led a team that included Alvin M. Weinberg, Catherine Way, Gail Young and Edward Kreutz. The group's task was to design the production nuclear reactors that would convert uranium into weapons-grade plutonium. At the time, reactors existed only on paper, and no reactor had yet gone critical. In July 1942, Weiner chose a conservative 100 megawatts design, with a graphite neutron moderator and water cooling. Weiner was present at a converted rackets court under the stands at the University of Chicago's abandoned Stagg Field on December 2, 1942, when the world's first atomic reactor, Chicago Pile 1, achieved a controlled nuclear chain reaction. Weiner was disappointed that DuPont was given responsibility for the detailed design of the reactors, not just their construction. He threatened to resign in February 1943, but was talked out of it by the head of the metallurgical laboratory, Arthur Compton, who sent him on vacation instead. As it turned out, a design decision by DuPont to give the reactor additional load tubes for more uranium saved the project when neutron poisoning became a problem. Without the additional tubes, the reactor could have been run at 35% power until the boron impurities in the graphite were burned up in enough plutonium produced to run the reactor at full power, but this would have set the project back a year. During the 1950s, he would even work for DuPont on the Savannah River site. Weiner did not regret working on the Manhattan Project, and sometimes wished the atomic bomb had been ready a year earlier. An important discovery Weiner made during the project was the Weiner effect. This is a swelling of the graphite moderator caused by the displacement of atoms by neutron radiation. The Weiner effect was a serious problem for the reactors at a Hanford site in the immediate post-war period, and resulted in production cutbacks and a reactor being shut down entirely. It was eventually discovered that it could be overcome by controlled heating and annealing. Through Manhattan Project funding, Weiner and Leonard Eisenberg also developed an important general approach to nuclear reactions. The weiner eisenberg R matrix theory, which was published in 1947, later years, Weiner accepted a position as the Director of Research and Development at the Clinton Laboratory in Oak Ridge, Tennessee in early 1946. Because he did not want to be involved in administrative duties, he became co-director of the laboratory, with James Lum handling the administrative chores as executive director. When the newly created Atomic Energy Commission took charge of the laboratory's operations at the start of 1947, Weiner feared that many of the technical decisions would be made in Washington. He also saw the Army's continuation of wartime security policies at the laboratory as a meddlesome oversight, interfering with research. 
One such incident occurred in March 1947, when the AEC discovered that Weiner's scientists were conducting experiments with a critical mass of uranium-235 when the director of the Manhattan Project, Major General Leslie R. Groves, Jr., had forbidden such experiments in August 1946 after the death of Louis Slotin at the Los Alamos Laboratory. Weiner argued that Groves's order had been superseded, but was forced to terminate the experiments, which were completely different from the one that killed Slotin. Feeling unsuited to a managerial role in such an environment, he left Oak Ridge at the end of summer in 1947 and returned to Princeton University, although he maintained a consulting role with the facility for many years. In the post-war period he served on a number of government bodies, including the National Bureau of Standards from 1947 to 1951, the Mathematics Panel of the National Research Council from 1951 to 1954, the Physics Panel of the National Science Foundation, and the Influential General Advisory Committee of the Atomic Energy Commission from 1952 to 1957 and again from 1959 to 1964. He also contributed to civil defense. Near the end of his life, Weiner's thoughts turned more philosophical. In 1960, he published a now classic article on the philosophy of mathematics and of physics, which has become his best-known work outside of technical mathematics and physics. The Unreasonable Effectiveness of Mathematics in the Natural Sciences he argued that biology and cognition could be the origin of physical concepts, as we humans perceive them, and that the happy coincidence that mathematics and physics were so well matched seemed to be unreasonable and hard to explain. His original paper has provoked and inspired many responses across a wide range of disciplines. These included Richard Hamming in computer science, Arthur Lesk in molecular biology, Peter Norvig in data mining, Max Tegmark in physics, Ivor Grattan Guinness in mathematics, and Vela Velupoli in economics. Weiner was awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1963 for his contributions to the theory of the atomic nucleus and the elementary particles particularly through the discovery and application of fundamental symmetry principles. The prize was shared that year, with the other half of the award divided between Maria Goepert-Mayer and J. Hans D. Jensen. Weiner professed that he had never considered the possibility that this might occur, and added, I never expected to get my name in the newspapers without doing something wicked. He also won the Franklin Medal in 1950 the Enrico Fermi Award in 1958, the Atoms for Peace Award in 1959, the Max Planck Medal in 1961, the National Medal of Science in 1969, the Albert Einstein Award in 1972, and the eponymous Weiner Medal in 1978. In 1968 he gave the Josiah Willard Gibbs Lecture. Mary died in November 1977. In 1979, Weiner married his third wife, Aileen Claire Patton Hamilton, the widow of physicist Donald Ross Hamilton, the dean of the graduate school at Princeton University, who had died in 1972. In 1992, at the age of 90, he published his memoirs, The Recollections of Eugene P. Weiner with Andrew Cezantin. In it, Weiner said, the full meaning of life, the collective meaning of all human desires, is fundamentally a mystery beyond our grasp. As a young man, I chafed at this state of affairs, but by now I have made peace with it. I even feel a certain honor to be associated with such a mystery. In his collection of essays, symmetries and reflections, scientific essays, he commented, it was not possible to formulate the laws of quantum mechanics in a fully consistent way without reference to consciousness. Weiner died of pneumonia at the University Medical Center in Princeton, New Jersey on 1 January 1995. He was survived by his wife Eileen and children Erica, David and Martha, and his sisters Bertha and Margaret. Publications 1958 Physical Theory of Neutron Chain Reactors University of Chicago Press
ISBN 0-226-88517-8. 1959. Group Theory and its Application to the Quantum Mechanics of Atomic Spectra. New York. Academic Press. Translation by J. J. Griffin of 1931. Group and Theory und die HRE an Wendungen auf die Quantum Mechanik der Atomspektren. By Weg Verlag. Braunschweig. 1970. Symmetries and Reflections. Scientific Essays. Indiana University Press. Bloomington. ISBN 0-262-73021-9. 1992. The Recollections of Eugene P. Weiner, Plenum, ISBN 0-306-44326-0, 1995, Philosophical Reflections and Syntheses, Springer, Berlin ISBN 3-540-63372-3.